Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So this is a little different for me. Normally you don't see my face and you just see my hands. Um, but today is an Ask Me Anything. So I thought this would be kind of a fun idea, kind of change it up a little bit. Um, so I asked my followers on Instagram. Uh, if you're not one of those people, you should be. So you should follow me over at Planning with Cass on Instagram. But I asked my followers just to, you know, ask me questions, ask me anything. And you guys came through. Like, I was expecting, like, I don't know, two or three. You guys, you know, you showed up. So I was uh, super impressed with the amount of questions. So I've briefly looked over them, but not not really. So I haven't, like, thought about my responses Um in advance, I want it to be more, you know, organic. So let's just go ahead and get started. All right. So our first question is, how long have you been planning and what got you started? And this question is from Tess Likes to Plan, who has a great YouTube channel here. You should follow her. I'll put her link in the description. Um, so as far as how long I've, I've been planning, um, I've been doing some form of planning my entire life, I would say, like since elementary school. Um just because it's something I've always enjoyed. Like I've always enjoyed having a pen and paper and like planning out my day and, and writing down to-do lists and things like that. But as far as like creative and decorative planning and entering the planner community, that started in 2017 for me. Um, and that was with a happy planner. That's what uh, kind of introduced me to the whole planner community and this whole idea of creative and decorative planning, which I didn't know was a thing. I didn't know that existed. So it was pretty cool to discover that because as someone who has always loved paper, pens, stickers, at this point, I didn't really know too much about washi tape and that was a whole other thing. Um, <laughs> I was just completely like blown away by it. So what really got me started was um, I had missed having a paper planner because when I was in college, you know, I was kind of trying to transition to just using like Google Calendar to keep track of my assignments. And I would just have like little notebooks and I would just jot down every day and just like a plain notebook or whatever. And, um, you know, I would buy like those little academic planners at my college bookstore and, and try to use that. And it just, it, I don't know, it just never like worked out. It didn't make me, I wasn't excited to use it. And when I got my happy planner, my first, you know, real planner, I guess, um, I was taking master's courses. I was working on my master's degree and that really helped keep me, uh, Okay. And so when I got my first real planner, my happy planner, I was, uh, I was in college still, but I'd gone back. I was working on my master's degree and having that as a one, a way to keep me organized, um, and two, a creative outlet. It just, I had just been really missing having a paper planner and having that creative outlet um, cause I've dabbled in little things. Like I like the paint and I'm not very good at it, but I like the paint. Um, I like to, again, I'm not very good at it, but I like to draw. Like I just, I've always liked creative things. I like to play music and, um, it's just, it's just for me, the, you know, the idea of being able to plan my best life, um, and you know use stickers and and make it decorative and everything like I noticed that I was excited to open up my planner every day and I think that is that's the goal right <laughs> I mean if you're not excited about your planner you're not going to want to open it and so for me it's just been a huge creative outlet um, so what got me started honestly was just seeing online like the sticker books and the the layouts and like it was just a whole I had no clue this was a thing um and so shout out to my friend Kim who I remember her asking me like have you heard of these happy planners and then that was it so um you know just going on Instagram and seeing everybody with these beautiful stickers and these like I was like what what is this and how do I become a part of it so that is how I got started back in 2017 all right next question how has your planning changed during the quarantine Great question. 
Um, I've seen a lot of people online throughout this in, this entire year saying, you know, oh, I wasted my money buying a 2020 planner and <laughs> because we're quarantined and we can't really do anything. Um, but for me, it's the total opposite. Like my planner has been the one, not the one thing, but one of the only things that have kept me sane throughout this entire year. I mean, this year has been... <laughs> Yeah, so having that planner and that structure, um, just to even be able to write down little things, like back at the like very beginning of quarantine, now I've been, I've been very, very, very lucky and blessed to be working this entire time. I've kept my job, and so I always had those work to-dos to write down, so that, that was helpful, but even like small things, like I wasn't planning trips or things like that. Um, so I would plan out, you know, I had a page that was, you know, when quarantine is over, here's some things I'd like to do or places I'd like to travel in the future, just like trying to think about the future and when this is all over. Um, and now we're in December and we're here again, but it will, it will get better. I know it will. Um, but just really trying to use it as a therapeutic device, you know, using my planner for therapy and um, also is that creative outlet. So even if it's little things like writing down, like if you know you need to do a load of laundry today, just writing that down and checking it off, like something like that even just makes me feel better and has helped me throughout this entire year. Um, my planning style has definitely changed throughout quarantine. That was not intentional. Um, but just a lot of stuff has happened this year, just to keep it short. And um, I've really kind of found my style and what I like currently. Obviously, that's going to change um, just organically, like your styles change and everything. But um, I really love my current planner setup. And uh, be sure I have a video coming on my current planner setup. So be sure you're subscribed if you have not yet because I have a video coming up uh, explaining, you know, showing my planner stack and explaining um, how I kind of use each one. Next question. Why did you start using the HP system? And this is from Planning with Amanda. You should go follow her on Instagram. Um, good question, Amanda. So I really started using the Happy Planner system, like I talked about a little bit before. Honestly, the, the biggest draw for me was the stickers, like when I saw the stickers and the sticker books. And then when I actually saw a sticker book in person and flipped through it, I was like, oh, man, like this is <laughs> this is me. I've always loved stickers. And um, so that was a huge draw. But also the whole disc bound system and the idea of being able to take pages out and put pages back in totally like customize my planner and change it up as often as I would like. Um, now, Happy Planner was not my introduction to discs. Um, that was actually ARC by Staples. And a coworker had used a uh, notebook from Staples, an ARC notebook. And I remember <laughs> they were like going around and telling all of us about it and, and showing us and being like, look how cool this is. And I, I thought it was cool too. And then I got one. And so I was using an ARC notebook, which was on discs. So I was familiar with that. Um, but to actually have that for a planner, I thought it was like, oh, this is really cool. So honestly, the stickers drew me in, but also just that, uh, you know, ability to change up my planner as often I was, as I would like and um, being able to, you know, add pages in and take them out is just like crucial for me, which is why for my catch-all planner, like my everyday, like my main planner, um, I don't think I'll ever go away from either discs or ring bound. All right, next question, uh, not planning related. What video games are you playing lately? So lately, surprise, surprise, I've been playing The Last of Us Remastered again. I'm playing through Left Behind on Grounded Difficulty right now. Um, I've been stuck on the same part for three days, but I'm going to get through it. I came so close. I came so close. I'm getting there. I've been playing Donkey Kong Country 2 on the original hardware. There's something about playing on the original hardware. I've been playing Mario 3D All-Stars, still getting through Mario Galaxy again, which is my favorite 3D Mario game. Played through Florence, which made me cry my eyes out. Astro's Playroom is just so much better than I thought it was going to be. Visage, which, <sighs> wear a diaper if you play Visage. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for right now. I've really been um, enjoying playing through 
The Last of Us uh, Left Behind again because I hadn't played it in a while and I am going to be working on another playthrough of The Last of Us Part 2 because I need some time. Yeah, I need some time to recover from that after I initially beat it when it first came out. So um, I'm playing through that again on Grounded and we'll see if I can get through it. All right, next question. Favorite pens to use and favorite dessert. Favorite pens is hard because that changes a lot. I just I just love pens. So just a few of my favorite pens right here. Ride or die, I think, will always be Papermate Ink Joy Gel. I like the fine tip. I like the medium tip. The, I love Ink Joy Gel pens. Like this will probably always be one of my favorites. Papermate Flare. Uh, as far as felt tip pens, which I do, I do love a good felt tip. I love a Papermate Flare. I've been really enjoying the Bic Gelosity. This is a great fine point. This is the um, 0.5 millimeter fine point. Uh, it's a really good fine point. Gel pen, ink dries super quickly. And Sharpie S gel. Sharpie S gels are just so like nice like they're luxe they have a nice grip on them uh this is the 1.0 this is the bold point one and i love this one for journaling i love bold point um and when i'm in the mood for a bold point pen i usually go for this one and the ink dries super fast but those are just a few <laughs> and i do have a i'm not sure at this point when you're seeing this if it is already up or if it will be coming out um but i'm have a pen collection video either already out or coming up so make sure you check that out Oh, I almost forgot. Favorite dessert. Um, ice cream. 100% ice cream. Okay, so next question. Uh, my friend Natalia asked, can you place stickers in places or do you have commitment issues? Yes. And yes. <laughs> so... I do have commitment issues with certain stickers, particularly like ones that are just so pretty. I have a problem with hoarding stickers and not wanting to use them, but I've really gotten better this year about actually using my stickers because I just kind of want to, you know, my friend Queen, uh, Queen's Fancy Plans, make sure you subscribe to her YouTube channel, follow her on Instagram. She started a shop your stash challenge and that really inspired me to like, okay, stop buying new stuff and just use the stuff you already have because there are some stickers I've had for like two or three years now. It's like, okay, let's use them. Let's enjoy them and then make room for new stuff for next year. So um, yes, I do place my stickers down, but I do also have commitment issues. Next question. Can you still make guacamole if you don't actually have an avocado? If so, how? Next question. If you could have any eye color, which would it be? So my eyes are hazel. And honestly, I wouldn't change that. Um, I actually have like used filters on Instagram that make my eyes different colors. And I look weird with blue eyes. I look, I mean, brown eyes are pretty similar because hazel is like green and brown. Some days my eyes look more brown. Some days they look more green. Um, Honestly, I really, I wouldn't change anything. I love my eyes and um, it's one of the things I've always loved about myself. And I also have my dad's eyes. So every time I look at my eyes, I'm doing my makeup and stuff, reminds me of my dad. So um, yeah, I wouldn't change my eye color. What's the longest you've spent upside down? <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know how to answer that. I don't even know what the answer is. I don't, I don't even know. If you were a kitchen appliance, which would you be and why? A kitchen appliance. I'd be a waffle maker because waffles are great. I don't know. How many leaves are on the average tree? I don't know. Okay, a planning question. How do, you, how do you stay motivated to plan each week? That's a great question, Danielle. Uh, that's my mom that asked that question. So staying motivated to plan each week, um, I'm not going to lie. There are some weeks where I don't have the motivation to plan. You know, this year has been really hard, um, goes without saying, but for the most part, I've stayed motivated to plan because like I said, it's a creative release for me. 
it's one of the things I look forward to doing is like sitting down with my planner and my stickers and my pens. And like, I just really enjoy that. But there have been a few weeks where I just don't want to plan. And I don't. That's the simple answer is I don't, I don't force myself to use my planner if I'm not feeling it. But like I said, for the most part, like I really look forward to doing my layouts. And even if I do it late, um, and there have been some weeks where I just don't do a layout. I don't use any stickers. I don't use any washi. And I just write down what I need to do. I definitely don't enjoy using my planner as much when I do that. But um, as far as staying motivated, it really just helps me uh, mentally. It's a creative release. It's just something I really enjoy. So, um, And also, the a big thing uh, is my friends and seeing them posting their spreads on Instagram or sending me a picture of their spread. Or somebody commenting and saying, hey, this inspired me to do my spread like this this week. Like that, that's really uh, very motivating for me. All right. A couple more questions here. This is from Terry, from Tall Girl Terry. Be sure to follow her on Instagram. If you could only have three items in your stash other than pen and paper, what would you choose? This is a great question. All right. So other than my pens, other than my paper, if I can only have three items. Right now, uh, the first one would probably be that clear Honeybee Shop Blackout Bat Bow Washi. If you know, you know. Clear Washi is like my, I, oh my God. Um, and the Bat Bows and it's black, like it goes with everything. Like, okay, so that'd be number one. Oh God, this is tough. <sighs> Other than pen and paper, my bat discs. My bat discs from Muse Lab, like, there's no, go over to my Instagram for a picture, like, bat discs. Like, are you kidding? Okay. So, <laughs> so my clear bat bow washi, my bat discs, we have two bat, I mean, there's a theme going on here. And I think the third one would be my B6TN cover, my gray one from the honeybee shop that I... Like my B6TN right now is like, it's my baby. Like it makes me feel really happy. So yeah, I'd probably choose that B6TN cover, the clear bat bow washi and the bat discs. All right. This is from my best friend, James. Biggest pet peeve in games other than the wet hair thing. Okay. So what he's talking about is y'all. Wet hair doesn't look like this, okay? Developers are getting better about it now, but there was a time, especially last gen and gen before that, where you'd have your character walking around and it's like downpouring and their hair is like this and it's moving like this. In the And I'm like, no, like the, the wind is blowing and their hair is like that. I'm like, that's not how wet hair works. And then they would like go under, they'd be like swimming and they'd go underwater, like Lara Croft. And she come out of the water and she's just like, no. So the first time I saw wet hair done correctly, I want to say it was Death Stranding. I could be wrong about that, but that was like one of the first times when I saw it and I was like, Hideo Kojima, come through. Um, but my biggest pet peeve, other than the wet hair thing, I was just talking to Jimmy about this today. When you're playing a third person game, you got a third person perspective and it's raining and there's raindrops on your screen. No, I mean, that's like breaking the fourth wall. You're in third person. Now, if you're in first person and you're seeing through the eyes of the character, it makes sense to see the rain right in front of you on the screen, especially Jimmy plays a lot of racing games. You're in first person on the windshield. You see the raindrops. That makes sense. When you're playing a third person game and you're walking around and it's raining and then there's raindrops on the screen. What? Yeah, that's probably my biggest, if you can't tell, that drives me insane. And the last question is from Queen. Why are you so freaking awesome? Why are you so freaking awesome, Queen? <laughs> so thank you guys so much for uh, submitting these questions. I really enjoyed answering them and enjoyed reading your questions and got a laugh out of some of them. And um, if you guys have any more questions, you'd like me to do another another one of these, you know, leave a comment down below. Um, follow me on Instagram. 
you know, leave a comment on one of my posts. Um, I love answering these types of questions. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you are enjoying the Plan Miss series. It's been a lot of work, but a lot of fun. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, be sure to subscribe if you have not. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.